Hello again and welcome to the Bex EDM YouTube channel, where today, in episode 7, I'm going to discuss the ARC generator. So if you have seen episode 1, the introduction, then you know by now how the EDM uh, process works. And you know that in order to cut with electricity, you need to have controlled electric discharges that are cycled at a high frequency, and this allows you to eat into the metal. Now, in order to, to do all this, you need an ARC generator which is basically a power supply with the, a current limiting function in it that can quickly turn on and off at a, a predetermined frequency and duty cycle. Now, luckily for you, uh, you do not have to develop an arc generator yourself. You can simply purchase one on BaxEDM.com and this will save you a ton of work. Uh, it took me uh, about a year to get a very robust functioning prototype. And then it took me more than a year to turn that into a product. So if you want to save yourself a whole lot of work, you can simply purchase the ARC generator on BaxEDM.com. So the generator on BaxEDM.com is the BX17 ARC generator. And this is the generator that I'm going to discuss in this episode. So I will show you how you can install the BX17 what uh, connectors it has um, and what functionalities it has and I will show you uh, how to use the user interface on the computer to configure the ARC generator. And basically that's it for today. So I hope you enjoy. This is the enclosure of the ARC generator. It's a 19 inch 3U high enclosure, so it's a standard uh, dimension. Um, one thing to note is that the enclosure should be free to breathe on the, from the bottom and from the top as well. So uh, both the bottom and top are perforated and um, yeah, the arc generator uh, needs to be able to vent. So uh, you should not place it on the flat tabletop or if you build it into a 19 inch cabinet, you should make sure that there can be free flow here. So, um, the power button is on the back and so are the uh, connectors. So let me uh, turn it around and we can have a look. This is the back of the BX17. So we have a power switch here with a standard uh, Euro socket for the mains. There's a Spicon 4 pole connector for the uh, power out output, the high frequency power output. There's a small connector, Mini XLR, that's uh, required for the feedback signal. Then there are two connectors over here. There's a 9 pin D sub connector and a 15 pin D sub connector. So the 9 pin D sub connector contains the RS485 interface to the computer. And it also contains the uh, differential optically isolated analog feedback signal that represents the arc voltage. And that is the signal that is used in the closed loop control. This connector contains uh, three optically isolated inputs and three optically isolated outputs. And these inputs and outputs can be, uh, can be used to turn the device on or off to uh, perform edge detection and uh, other functionalities. This connector here, the X4 connector, that's a simple DIN connector to which you can hook up a warning light. So here you can see the uh, BX17 R generator hooked up in the back. So this is my uh, power cable. These are uh, two individual cables, which are LITSA cables, so high frequency power cable. And these go all the way up to the uh, C arc. And it needs to split. So the positive side goes to the workpiece table. And the negative side is split. So I splice the cable here 
because it goes to the upper wire contact and the lower wire contact. And then there are two thin wires here. So there's one wire, thin wire connected to the uh, wire connection point, the EDM wire connection point, and there's a thin wire connected to the uh, workpiece table. And these go into a twisted pair that run back to the arc generator. That go in right here. And that's the sense voltage. So this wire is required because when you have high frequency, high power running through a cable, then the voltage on one side of the cable is different compared to the voltage on the other side of the cable. And as we are really interested in the voltage across the arc, we need to measure it on the other side of the cable. Here again is the power input. Here is a connector that has a simple uh, 12 volt cord running uh, to the uh, warning light. This is my communication cable with the uh, analog feedback signal in it. And this is at the digital I.O. Note that for all cables you should use shielded cables and you should use uh, shielded EMC connector hoods. So let me show you the dashboard application for the uh, BX17 arc generator. When you go to bagsedm.com, in the download section, you can download uh, the application itself uh, in a zip file, which you can extract, and it just contains a single executable. And you can download the uh, parameter library. So when you run the uh, executable, uh, it only runs when you uh, place the parameter uh, file next to it because it needs it to open. So when you run the executable, you basically see this screen here. Let me maximize it. So this is the Arc Configuration Library tab. Um, when you start out, it's, uh, it's empty. It only has a line with a single example. And you can add your own lines there. So for each... Uh, a machine the parameters will be slightly different because each machine is custom and therefore each machine will behave differently so you have to uh, find these parameters yourself uh, there are some guidelines of how to how to uh, choose them uh, which are uh, explained in the uh, in the manual of the Bex EDM arc generator but uh, yeah once you have found a parameter set that um, uh, machines well for your particular uh, purpose so for your particular material and uh, thickness of the, of the material you can store the parameter set here so uh, the main numbers are the current the on time and the off time of the arc and um, on the uh, cnc control you have to choose uh, a set point uh, for the uh, feedback voltage um, but that is a, a set point that you have to choose in the CNC control. So if you have found the parameter set that works well, and also a set point voltage that, that works well, you can note it in a, in a new line. So you can add a, add a new line here. For instance, like this, add new config, then you can add a new line. Um, and uh, the final column here allows you to make some notes. So. Uh, I noted down here, for instance, for, for this line, uh, I, I cut aluminum 55 millimeters thick with a seven volt set point, and I achieved uh, 1.35 millimeters per minute of cutting speed. And that went, that went just fine. So next time when I need to machine aluminum of 55 millimeters thick, I can select this line, and then I choose use this configuration in the control tab. Then we move over to the control tab, and then the configuration has, has been copied. So you can see uh, I was machining at 20 amps with a duty cycle of 10%, an arc on time of uh, 4 microseconds, and an arc off time of 21 microseconds. Now, you can flash this configuration to the arc generator. In order to do so, you first need to open uh, 
a communication channel to the arc generator. So you select the COM port. I have mine plugged in right now and I only have one COM port, but if you have multiple COM ports, you should select the right COM port here. You, you can press open, then the, the serial port is open. And then it's very simple. You press send configuration and then the configuration is flashed to the arc generator. To make sure it's in, you can also press get. And uh, now you see what the actual configuration is that is inside the arc generator. So if I move it now, if I change it, something like this, and then I press get, you can see it updates the numbers to the actual numbers that are in the arc generator. So you could choose your configuration here. There are some uh, values of uh, or some combinations of parameters that are not allowed. For instance, if you go a really high current and then a really high frequency, um, then it's not allowed. And then the numbers turn red. Uh, and then this send config button doesn't work. So there are a few combinations of parameters that are not allowed. And uh, if you change the parameters during machining, which is possible, you can use the mouse or you can use your up and down arrows for the uh, changing the, the sliders. Then on the fly, you can change the parameters by sending it. And um, if it seems to work well, you can also choose to save these uh, display parameters as a new configuration. So when you press this button and go back to the R configuration library, you see a new configuration popped up. So basically it's stored in the, the numbers here. So then you can fill in which material you are cutting, your thickness, uh, the EDM mode, and all other uh, relevant things. You can fill it in the line, and then when you press save, it saves it to the ARC library uh, file. Now on this tab, there are some other options. You can uh, select the operating mode. So there are three operating modes. ISO frequency, that's the simplest mode in which the, uh, the duty cycle is exactly fixed. And that is the duty cycle of the voltage across the gap. But uh, yeah, the gap has a bit of random behavior. So the duty cycle of the current through the gap will not be 25%. However, if you choose ISO pulse, then the duty cycle will vary, the duty cycle of the voltage over the gap, but the duty cycle of the current will be 25%. Because in ISO pulse mode, the exact uh, amount of energy given by each arc is dosed. Then in the third mode, uh, it's edge find. So if you select this, then the high power output is switched off. And uh, you can uh, read out on one of the digital output pins if the wire is touching the workpiece or not. So there are three modes that you can choose from. Note that you can also select between uh, normal operating mode, one of, of these, or edge find also by just selecting an external input. So you can use the buttons or you can use an external input. This is all uh, given in detail in the uh, user manual of the BX17 arc generator, which uh, exactly shows which pins of the connectors you need to, uh, to use in order to do those functions. Now, if you happen to make uh, work pieces that, uh, or if, if you happen to make a, a single work piece and uh, yeah, you basically fig figured out the, the right parameter set for that, and you're not making much, or you're not making anything else, and you keep on using the same parameter set, then it's not required to use this application anymore because this application, this dashboard application, only is used to configure the arc generator. But if you also always use the same settings, you can click this button and then it will flash these settings as the default settings for the arc generator. Meaning that the next time when you uh, press the on button on the arc generator, it will automatically go to this parameter set. And then, yeah, if you only use these numbers, you'll never need to use this application again. But most likely, you will have uh, 
different materials, different thicknesses, uh, different uh, requirements for the finish on the parts. And uh, yeah, any time you need to change that, you need to change these parameters as well. Well, that's uh, basically it for the uh, interface of the, uh, of the arc generator. That's it for this part, the part on the arc generator. Um, this video was a bit shorter than the other videos. I could have made it really, really long because there are a lot of details that uh, make up the uh, arc generator. But all of these details have been captured carefully in the user manual of the arc generator. So if you want to know more information on how to set it up and how it actually works, you can go to bexedm.com to the download section and download the user manual of the arc generator, which has a lot of information. So I hope you enjoyed the video and see you next time.